All right, hi everyone. Now in the previous videos, we have taken a look at multiple different methods to go about the hyperparameter optimization problem. The problem of finding good hyperparameters for a machine learning algorithm. Now, one of these methods was grid search, where we simply specify the hyperparameters over which we want to search, as well as define rate or values that we want to try out for every hyperparameter, and then we simply evaluate all possible combinations. Now, an even simpler approach that we have seen is random search, where instead of specifying the values for every hyperparameter, we specify ranges and associated distributions. And then we sample configurations according to this distribution, and we evaluate them. Now, random search has given inspiration to, amongst others, success of halving, where we perform multiple rounds and in every round discard the worst half or more uh, of the configurations. And success of halving has in turn inspired hyperband, which simply performs multiple brackets of success of halving. Now, a limitation of all of these techniques is that they randomly sample the configurations that they're going to evaluate. Now, this means that they also neglect prior evaluations if they have them. Now, we have seen that Bayesian optimization is one method to combat this limitation. So in Bayesian optimization, what we do is we fit a surrogate model to our prior observations, uh, which also allows us to predict promising regions of the hyperparameter space such that we can focus or direct our search towards these more promising areas of the search space. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at one other Bayesian optimization method, namely the tree parts and estimator, which was proposed by Bergstra et al. in 2011. I will put the link to the original paper in the description below. Now, instead of modeling the performance of our given hyperparameter value, what we do in TPE is that we model the opposite. So we model the probability of observing a given hyperparameter value x given a certain loss value. So x here is the value of the single hyperparameter and y is the loss. <clears throat> now more specifically, what we do in TPE is that we maintain two surrogate models or two distributions. So we have one distribution for the bad values. So this is the probability distribution over the hyperparameter values, given that the loss, so y, was worse than some threshold. So the loss was higher than some uh, threshold that we have determined, which we can write as the probability of observing this or a given hyperparameter value, uh, given that the performance is bad. Now we also have the distribution for good values. So this is the density over the hyperparameter value x, given that the loss is lower or equal than the threshold that we have set. So this can be interpreted as the probability of x, given that it comes from the good distribution. Now note that this threshold, y star, is determined uh, by a hyperparameter gamma. So how this works in practice is suppose that we have 100 different observations and then if our gamma is set to 0.5, what this means is that we take the best 50% of our observations in order to fit the good distribution and we use the 50 worst configurations in order to fit the bad distribution. So this is how the hyperparameter gamma influences the three parts in estimate. Now the question is of course, well, if we are modeling the probability of a given x given the performance, then how can we actually predict the performance which we want to use to obtain more new promising candidates? So this seems to be a bit of a problem, uh, but TPE uses the following solution. So what they do is they say that a promising candidate is likely to have a low probability under the bad distribution. So it is unlikely to occur amongst your bad observations, while it is 
very likely to occur under the good distribution. So this is their, their idea. And what this means is that our promising the score of a given hyperparameter value x can be computed as the ratio between these two probabilities. So the probability or the ratio of the probability under the good distribution divided by the probability under the bad distribution is then a measure of promisingness of this hyperparameter value. All right, so note that if the probability under the bad distribution is low, this entire promising promising the score increases, and it also increases when the probability under the good distribution increases. Now they have shown in their paper that this is actually proportional to the expected improvement. All right, so let's see TPE in action. Now suppose that we have some kind of objective function which we wish to minimize. Now suppose also that we have already observed some points and that the circles or the red circles indicate uh, observations from our good group and, uh, <coughs> and these crosses correspond to observations from the bad group. All right, so what TPE then does is it fits a probability distribution to the good observations, so to these red circles and also it fits the probability distribution to our bad group so all of these crosses here now these two different probability distributions are shown in this image below so this is the probability distribution for the good group whereas this curve corresponds to the probability distribution for the bad group you see in the probability of uh, the bad group is higher at points where we have actually made observations. All right, now from these two distributions, we can uh, compute the promisingness score or the expected improvement to which it was shown to be proportional. Now, if we compute the expected improvement, we find out that at this point, the expected improvement is maximal. So this is relatively close to our two best observations. Uh, and this also means that this is probably the configuration that we want to try out next. So that's what we do. We evaluate this configuration. We now again compute our good and our bad groups based on our value of gamma. And again, we fit the two distributions. So we fit the good distribution, we fit the bad distribution, and we repeat the process. So we compute again the expected improvement. We now see that this value right here is predicted to be most promising, and thus we evaluate this point. Then again, we re-evaluate which points belong to the good group, which points belong to the bad group, based on our hyperparameter gamma, and we repeat this process over and over. All right, so now of course the question is, well, what type of distributions does TPE use per hyperparameter type? And the answer is that if you have a categorical hyperparameter, such as the Boolean flag of whether you want to, or whether you want to use batch normalization or not, uh, they just use a categorical distribution for this, also known as a point mass frequency. Now, and now come the more special cases, and that's when we have real valued or integer hyperparameters. <coughs> And what they use in TPE is a mixture of Gaussians. So when we want to sample in the original space, so not in block space, but in original space, what they use is a mixture of truncated Gaussians. And if they sample in log space, they use a mixture of truncated Gaussians in log space. Now, we will take a look uh, a bit later about what this mixture really is. Now, one question that comes up first is, well, why should we want to use truncated distributions? Now, the reason is, is that in hyperparameter optimization, as well as in random search, we actually specify the range, the admissible range of values over which we want to search. Now, we want to be able to do the same for TPE. So we want to be able to say, well, this is the minimum value, 
this is the maximum value, go find something in between. So by truncating these distributions, we can enforce this constraint so that values outside of this range automatically get assigned a probability of zero. All right, and now let's take a look at how or what we actually take the mixture of. So suppose that we have made three observations. So let's say we have observed this value, this value, and this value. What TPE then does is it says, well, I'm going to fit a Gaussian to every one of these points. So this point will get a Gaussian with a mean equivalent to this hyperparameter value. This point will get a Gaussian again with a mean equivalent to this value. And this point will also get an associated Gaussian with the mean equivalent to this value. Now the standard deviations of these Gaussians set equal to the maximum distance between the right or the left neighbor. Of course, in sorted order. So in this case, we have no left neighbor. We do have a right neighbor. So this standard deviation of this Gaussian distribution will be set to this distance. All right. So we see now that for every value, we have different Gaussian distributions. And we can mix these distributions in order to end up with a single distribution. So this curve right here represents the mixture of all of these Gaussians. Of course, the question that arises then is, well, suppose that we want, we have a point here and we want to compute how likely that is under our mixed distribution. So how we compute this is we simply say, well, this point could be sampled from this distribution, so from the first Gaussian. So this is the probability of this value under the first distribution, but it could also come from the second distribution. So we have to add the probability under the second distribution, but it can also come from the third distribution. So we also have to add that term. And of course, then in the end, we have to normalize by the number of Gaussians so that it stays a valid probability distribution. All right, so this is how we can compute the probability density at a given point if we use a mixture of Gaussians. All right, so that's the idea of TPE. Of course, this is also a Bayesian optimization method. It's uh, very data efficient because we use a surrogate model. It's convincingly faster than random search. Uh, but on the, uh, on the downside, it does take time to train the surrogate model. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves the questions of how to set the hyperparameters. In the case of a tree parsing estimator, we of course have to set uh, the hyperparameter gamma, which determines the good and the bad split. And in addition, we have to define the probability distributions that we use uh, for the surrogate models.